This is Ian Cameron for Sportsbook Review with your college basketball play of the day for Thursday, January the 12th. We had our first college basketball play of the day video on Tuesday. And we had a nice easy cash with Florida State rolling over Duke, particularly in the second half, taking control of that basketball game, winning 88-72, cashing for us a play of the day winner. Let's see if we can deliver a second straight play of the day here in college basketball for this Thursday card. It's a big card, and we're going to go to a Pac-12 matchup. The UCLA Bruins taking on the Colorado Buffaloes. UCLA currently, uh, as of this taping, a six-point road favorite uh, against Colorado. Total of 159.5. And, and for the UCLA Bruins, we know how uh, offensively, Explosive this team is, 16-1 and one straight up so far. Their only loss coming on the road at Oregon uh, in their first Pac-12 conference game. Uh, this is a very, very dangerous basketball team in terms of offensive weapons. TJ Leaf, Thomas Welsh, Bryce Alford, the coach's son, of course, Isaac Hamilton, Lonzo Ball. I just loaded this team with weapons that could put the ball in the basket. Uh, and that's been the biggest issue. They've been sort of criticized at times, this UCLA team, especially in years past, for being a little bit soft defensively. I think that's still a reputation that this team, on a game-by-game uh, -game basis, is still trying to shed, that they can man up. They can be a tough team, physical, defend when they have to and that's really what's going to determine their success but the bottom line right now for UCLA is from a point spread perspective they are at a crossroads okay in non-conference play they went undefeated they had a couple of nice wins a nice home win against Michigan now Michigan is not the same Wolverines basketball team that we've seen in years past under John Beeline they're having their struggles a little bit this season but you still beat it big name program like the Michigan Wolverines, uh, 102 to 84, that's going to bump up your power rating. And what's going to bump up your power rating even more is when you go on the road to Lexington, Kentucky, face the Kentucky Wildcats, one of the dominant best programs in college basketball for decades, and you go in there as an 11-point road underdog and you beat them 97-92. That was the pinnacle uh, result, I guess you could say, for UCLA in the non-conference. So they go into Pac-12 play undefeated, a big blowout win against Michigan at home, the huge road win against Kentucky as a double-digit underdog. So when UCLA started Pac-12 season, the betting market power rating on this team couldn't be any higher. It skyrocketed throughout the non-conference season. So what did that mean? It means it has left UCLA big time overvalued going into Pac-12 play and the number is starting to catch up with this basketball team four Pac-12 games for UCLA yeah they've won three of them three and one straight up uh, beating Oregon State Cal and Stanford but that's not the point the point we the thing that we're most focused on and interested in is ATS from a point spread perspective yeah they're three and one straight up but 0-4 oh uh, against the spread, and really, other than the Cal game, which could have went either way from a point spread perspective, they really weren't that close to covering the number in any of those four games. The Oregon game, you know, they, they were down for a lot of that game. They lose 89-87. The Oregon State game, 76-63, they really didn't come close to that 21-point road favorite number. Stanford, same thing, 89-75, 14-point win, but again, laying 21 uh, in that game. So, all of those great results, those gaudy performances by UCLA in the non-conference schedule, it's left them very much overvalued in the betting markets here in Pac-12 play. And it has shown they have not covered a number yet since conference play began. And I think they're in tough here. Now, I know Colorado has had their struggles. They've lost all three Pac-12 games so far. But they've also been dealt a terrible scheduling hand as far as I'm concerned. They're the, only, the first team in 85 years in Pac-12 play to have three straight road games to open the conference season uh, at Utah, at Arizona State, and at Arizona. Yeah, maybe the at Arizona State loss, that's kind of a bad loss. It's probably a team Colorado should have beaten, but no shame in losing at Utah. No shame in losing at Arizona. And in fact, I saw positive signs from Colorado in that Arizona loss in Tucson last weekend. They were down early at halftime. They really chipped away. They brought, they brought that down to a five-point Arizona lead in the last few minutes before Arizona went on a little bit of a surge to pull away and win that game 82-73. So, Positive signs, though, from Colorado. I didn't see quit. They battled back against Arizona, made that game close 
down the stretch. Uh, and they're talking the right, they're all saying all the right things, Colorado. We're 0 3 in the conference, but now we're back home in Boulder. Uh, we've only lost, you know, twice on this home floor uh, in conference play the last few years. So, again, Colorado coming back to a place where they usually play well. Now, granted, they haven't exactly played a great schedule, this Colorado team at home. Uh, but they do have a nice home win against Xavier. Xavier's a pretty good basketball team, 68-66. So it shows you the capability that this Colorado team has, particularly when they play here at home in Boulder, Colorado. And it's a senior-laden team. They have four seniors in their starting rotation. Uh, Xavier Johnson, Derek White, Wesley Gordon, uh, Josh Fortune. I mean, all of these guys, you know, they've played uh, basketball for quite some time. Even George King now has been around, the other guy in the starting five. He's been around with this Colorado team for a while. They have four seniors and one redshirt junior uh, in their starting five. This is an experienced team. This is a good team. This is supposed to be a team that's playing. That's supposed to be playing better than they've shown so far. And I think you get a desperation effort from them. They've got a marquee opponent in UCLA coming into Boulder. Colorado sitting there at 0 3. And let's be honest, UCLA. You know, in true road environments, you know, they did beat, I know they beat Kentucky, but, you know, they, they've also been vulnerable. They're 0-2 against the spread on the Pac-12 road. Lose at Oregon. You know, they really de never build enough of a margin against Oregon State to cover that number. And now you're going into a hostile environment against a, de a, a, de a solid Colorado team that I think is going to bring a pretty big effort to the basketball court tonight. They know they want a big performance. They know they need a win. And I think they make UCLA work for this game tonight. So what does that mean? It means it's time to reveal play of the day. You know where I'm going with this. We're going to take a shot with the live, what I think is going to be a live home underdog tonight. Let's go with Colorado, plus six, rotation number 582, the Buffs, plus six against the UCLA Bruins. UCLA 0-4 against the spread in Pac-12 play so far. The betting markets have caught up with them. I mean, this line actually opened UCLA minus seven on the road against a Colorado team that's capable and a tough place to play, that tells you all you need to know. UCLA is an overvalued commodity. If you've been betting against them in Pac-12 play, you've been making money so far. I think there's one more chance at least to fade UCLA, an overvalued team right now in this one tonight. Let's go with Colorado plus six play of the day in college basketball for Thursday, January the 12th. All right, that'll wrap it up. I'm Ian Cameron for Sportsbook Review. Until next time. Do your research before you bet. Check out our ratings guide to see which books have the best ratings and sign-up bonuses. Open up several accounts. Shop for lines at sbrodds.com. Always be ahead of the game.